welcome friends if you remember in our last lecture we were discussing analysis of a frame using direct stiffness method this was the frame we were analyzing using direct stiffness method we have analyzed that degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the frame was equal to 2 this was a hinge over here hinge at c the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the frame was equal to 2 and uh, we were analyzing it using direct stiffness method. We have derived FEM matrix for the frame. And I remember FEM matrix for the frame uh, we have derived. And we have derived the stiffness matrix for the frame K. We have derived the stiffness matrix for the frame K. FEM matrix we have derived 8 and minus 8. 8 and minus 8 was the FEM matrix which we have derived. And stiffness matrix, which was of the size 2 by 2, that also, that also we have derived. It was 2.6.5.5 and 2.6 into EI. This is what we have seen in our earlier lecture. This was the stiffness matrix and this was the FEM matrix. That is what we have seen. Now, let us go further. Let us go a step further. The next step in the analysis, as all of us have seen, is equilibrium equation is writing equilibrium equation of a structure since it is direct stiffness method there is no question of element equilibrium equation or structure equilibrium equation so equilibrium equation of the structure we know p is equal to fem plus k delta in which in last lecture we have seen the forces acting at coordinates 1 and 2 are 0 and 0 if you remember my coordinate 1 was this theta b was my coordinate 1 and theta c in anti clockwise direction was my coordinate 2 so the forces external forces acting at coordinate 1 and coordinate 2 are 0 fem we have seen it is 8 and minus 8 we have seen the logic behind writing 8 and minus 8 plus k matrix just now we have seen was 2.6 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 2.6. This was my K matrix and only unknown is delta 1 and delta 2. Now, when we solve these two simultaneous equations by bringing these on this side, we can get the value of delta 1 is equal to minus 3.80 divided by ei this 8 on if you bring it on this side will become minus 8 this minus 8 if you bring it on left hand side it will become plus 8 so there is it's an equation of two equations with it's a question of two equations with two unknown delta 1 is minus 3.80 and delta 2 is plus 3.80 upon ei somebody can take it 3.81 also because it is 3.809 if i write one more digit it is 3.809 so we have determined the deflections delta 1 and delta 2. I know delta 1 is nothing but theta b and delta 2 is nothing but theta c. This negative sign indicates theta b is clockwise because our assumptions were this was theta b, this was theta c, this was delta 1, this was delta 2. Since delta 1 is negative, this means I can assume that theta b is clockwise uh, rotation of 3.809 upon ei. And theta c, since it is positive, this means our assumed direction is right. It was anti-clockwise rotation of 3.809 upon ei. Now, how to proceed further? Once we know the deflections, we can find out the end forces. We can find out the end forces. Now, all of us know in last semester, we have seen the slope deflection equations. The slope deflection equation we have seen, we can apply those slope, slope deflection equations and find out the end moments find out the end moments and once we get the end moments we can easily plot the fix uh, the shear force diagram as well as bending moment diagram i hope you have understood the direct stiffness method now hence forth the method already we have learned that is slope deflection method if you want me to take one lecture on slope deflection method definitely i am ready for it but i wish you try for slope deflection method once we know delta 1 and delta 2 put these values in the end moments of end moment equations for slope deflection equations and get the values of end moments 
and once we get the end moments i am sure i can plot shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the frame so this is very very simple example we have taken up for the frame i think i should stop over here and your queries and your questions are most welcome and i would like to know whether you want me to introduce the slope deflection method to you for the same numerical that we can do it in our next video thank you